forcing the rivers and filling in this way. <coughs> Uh, Frederick Dellenbaugh was the illustrator on Pal's second trip. Uh, started out, he was 17 years old. <clears throat> and one of the questions is, uh, or one of the myths is that Pal named the Grand Canyon. Dellenbaugh was, a, to, to Dellenbaugh, Pal really was his hero. 17 year old impressionable kid, and he was the, a Pal supporter throughout his life. Um, he says Pal does, and he gets his version from Jack Sumner, who was on Pal's first trip. But the Grand Canyon appears in print the year that uh, Powell does his trip. So prior to Powell having been there, the name Grand Canyon is in there. Here's the discussion. Delamar writes this about Jack Sumner saying, there is no doubt whenever the Grand Canyon was named by Major Powell, not long after it came out of it, 1869. Here it is, Doc Marston, river historian, uh, of the 20th century, found this on a map where it says, right here, Grand Canyon of the Colorado River. Um, also, this was 1868, December 1st, but printed in 1869. So, appears on a map and appears in print in two different times before Powell goes down the river. Wasn't accepted completely, though. You saw the big canyon on that previous map. Powell didn't name it, but because of his mapping, and we'll see as we go on, he codified it. He put it on the map that became the most accessible to people. Didn't name it, but gets the credit for popularizing it. Here we see, really, the great uh, Terra Incognita out here. This is Canyonlands. You've got the Green River coming down, the, Col the Grand Colorado River coming over. Um, through Utah, and then it hits Arizona, and then it starts, but you can see this isn't very right. Here's the Little Colorado River. It comes way over past Havasu Creek, if you know where Havasu Canyon is. Uh, the Little Colorado that come in, the San Juan kind of just dies out here. This was uh, a Gorlinsky map of 1867. This is the one that uh, Powell supplied to the students in 1868 when they went out to Colorado or out in the field on a natural history trip. Rhodes Allen's brother had a copy of the, the map that the major gave to his brother Rhodes for this trip. Here's Rhodes with a group of, uh, it says, young explorers in camp in Wyoming. This is the group that went out with Powell in 68 from Illinois. Um, <clears throat> So been misidentified. There was a Gorlinski map that came out in 1869, but uh, I mean these were continuously updated by these guys. As they got more information from explorers, they would incorporate that new information. Uh, so misidentified just because the publication date was 1869, thought that Powell had that with him on the river trip, but not true because one of them wasn't published till December of that year. Powell's trip ended. <clears throat> this is uh, called the Freyhold Ward map of 1868, and this is a map that Powell had on the river with him in 1869. Uh, you can still see that there are a lot of blind spots in different places, and you can say Terra Incognita. Um, if any of you are really interested in maps, online, David Rumsey. DavidRumsey.com. He has, uh, you know, 20,000 maps online. He's a collector, and he pays to have this. He's got a digital production team that put these online. I was looking for three names, or three or four names from the journals of Pal's Men that they mentioned, because they only said the government map we have from Washington. And they were comparing their mileages and course of the river to the government map. Well, it doesn't give me much help. Because I was able to search online, I was able to find this. If I was, I wouldn't have found it yet to this day. This was uh, seven years ago I found this online. I still wouldn't have found it if I had to, to rely on going to repositories that had maps and looking for these. What we wanted was uh, Vermilion River. We wanted Brush Creek, Ashley Fork. Uh, a couple other names, and then what they call the Bitter Creek Desert. 
Well, here's Bitter Creek. And this says barrens with some pasture on the water. To me, barrens means desert. So to me, that's the Bitter Creek Desert. Uh, one guy also refers to uh, the Fremont map. And <clears throat> it doesn't show on this, but up here is a course that Fremont took in one of his expeditions. So this map was updating different ex explorations, and they were plotting where Fremont had gone. So he called it the Fremont map in mm -hmm. the Bitter Creek Desert. This is the only map I found that had all the names that the guys mentioned in their <coughs> journals. Uh, quite a few of them kept journals while they go along. Uh, so this is, I concluded, this is a, not this particular map, but a, a Framehold War in 1868 is what they had going down the river. <coughs> Jack Sumner was on uh, Powell's first trip. He was the brother-in-law of Byers, the newspaper man. And he um, was with Powell in 68 when they camped out. Sumner claims the idea for doing the river trip. Powell claims the idea. It was probably hatched in that campground. Uh, however, they discussed it. Someone came up with the idea and put it together. Powell was the one who put together the trip. Sumner actually kept a journal for Powell. Powell only one arm. Uh, he was right-handed and he lost his right arm. So keeping a journal was mm -hmm. tough for him. So he had something to keep a journal for him all the time. <clears throat> There's a little dispute. Uh, at the end, the three men hike out. One of the uh, stories that Sumner comes up with after the fact, 1907, after Powell has died in 1902, that uh, William Dunn had Powell's pocket watch, and he got it wet. Um, and Powell got mad at him and told him he had to leave the trip as soon as possible. Um, of course, you know, we've got this story 30-something years later. Um, we don't know, but there's a rapid in Cataract Canyon now, Rapid 24, that got the name attached to a pal's pocket watch because they thought that, someone thought that's where the event occurred. <clears throat> we do know that while they were taking astronomical observations, they observation for time, and the Elgin. That Powell had an Elgin watch with him. The watch still exists, belongs at the National Park Museum, it was donated by a relative of Powell's, and the family story was that this was the watch the major took down the river. Um, <clears throat> don't know whether it operates or not. No one is, since then has wound it or tested it. But a year after Powell's trip, 1870, this is out of a, the Elgin Almanac. It's a testimony by Powell to the company about how good the Elgin watch were. He also says we had four pocket chronometers. And a simple definition of a chronometer is a more accurate timepiece than a watch. But essentially, they, they would look pretty similar. We don't know what the make of or models of these were, but four pocket chronometers, we've got Powell's Elgin watch, which he says, I also had with me an Elgin. Um, of the five instruments, its rate was second best. That's consistency. Uh, with the ordinary disturbance due to transportation, its rate was the least value variable. While with the extraordinary disturbance incident to such an expedition, it was the only instrument on which I could rely. The chronometers at last becoming useless. So this is his testament to the Elgin. How they got that, I don't know. Whether they Powell volunteered it or someone asked. This is only a this is not even a year later when he's doing this. <clears throat> so he's got instruments that operate. So the story about Dunn getting Powell's watch wet and then Powell telling him to leave the river is, is dubious at best. 